Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to map the ports of India in a very interesting way where while mapping, we will not only understand the importance of these ports, but we will also try and converge the historical as well as the geographical aspects of the emergence of these ports, so that eventually learning becomes very easy. Alright, let's begin. Right, so before we map the important Indian ports, let us quickly go through some important points related to the ports of India. The first one, which all of us know, is that India is surrounded by sea from three sides and has a long coastline. So if this is the coastline of the peninsula of India, all of us know that this is the Arabian Sea, this is Bay of Bengal and this is Indian Ocean. This is very simple. Let's move on. India has a long tradition of seafaring and developing ports since the ancient time, the medieval times and traditionally the ports were known as Patan. Though ports have been used since ancient times, their emergence as gateways of international trade became important after the arrival of the Europeans and the colonization of the country by the British. Now let us quickly go back in time and understand the importance of these ports and why there was a necessity of developing a lot of ports in India. So in colonial times, if you look at the colonial map of India, this is something how colonial India looked like. So the sea coast started from today's Pakistan and extended till Bangladesh as all of it was part of colonial India and some of the important ports in those times were Karachi, Mumbai, then there was Chennai, Kolkata and Chittagong. So this is how the British were taking care of all the trade to the western part of the world, predominantly to Europe and to the eastern part of the world. Now as you must be knowing that the Europeans came to India circumventing the continent of Africa but in 1869 in 1869 the Suez Canal was opened and this led to the shortening of the path between Europe and India Now why are we discussing this this is because the ports of Karachi and Mumbai they became very important as the distance was shortened and especially Karachi Karachi was the shortest path between Europe and India now as you must be knowing that Karachi went to Pakistan, West Pakistan after partition and Chittagong went to East Pakistan which was later part of Bangladesh after the liberation in 1971. Right, so India was left with three major ports which were Mumbai, Chennai and Kolkata although there were minor ports as well but there was a necessity of developing more major ports and minor ports because of the high population and the high demand of exports and imports of this population and a huge geographical area demanded that a lot of ports to be built in this very long coastline. That is why the government decided that over a period of time a lot of ports would be developed. Right, so at present there are 12 major ports and 185 minor ports. The major ports come under the jurisdiction of central government, whereas the minor ports come under the jurisdiction of the state government. Now let us map the important major ports of India. The first one is Kandla. Now Kandla port was developed after independence and it is here at the head of the Kutch Peninsula and it was basically developed to cater to the needs of Western and Northwestern India and also to reduce the burden of the Mumbai port. Now the Kandla port is specially designed to receive large quantities of petroleum and fertilizers. The second port is Mumbai. Now one thing that you must remember about Mumbai is that it is a natural port that it was not artificially made. Now the British discovered that ships could dock naturally at this port and there was no need to create an artificial port at this location that is why Mumbai is a natural port. Now Kandla and Mumbai port are important because they connect India from the western part of the world, Middle East, Mediterranean, Europe, America, all of them are connected to India through these two ports as they have the shortest distance. Next is Jawaharlal Nehru port in Navi Mumbai. Now this was built as a satellite port to relieve the pressure of the Mumbai port. Next is the Mormugao port. Now this port is also a natural harbour and it is at the head of the Zuari river in Goa. Now it caters to the need of Karnataka, Goa, Southern Maharashtra 
and other adjoining areas. Then we have the new Mangalore port. This is in Karnataka and it caters to the needs of the export of iron ore and iron concentrates. It also handles fertilizers, petroleum products, edible oils, coffee, tea, wood pulp, yarn, granite stones, molasses, etc. And then we have the Kochi port. Kochi port is in Kerala. Now Kochi port is situated at the head of the Vembanad Kayal lake and it is popularly known as the queen of the Arabian sea. Now it caters to the need of Kerala, Southern Karnataka and Southwestern Tamil Nadu. Next we have the Tutikurin port. Now Tutikurin port was developed to relieve the pressure of the Chennai port and it deals with a variety of cargo including coal, salt, food grains, edible oils, sugar, chemicals and petroleum products. Then we have one of the oldest ports in India which is the Chennai port. Earlier it was known as Madras port. It was built by the British as an artificial port in 1859. Now it is not much suitable for large ships because of the shallow waters near the coast and it caters to the need of Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry. Now I remember I read somewhere that the British built the Chennai port because of the Chennai city and they built the Mumbai city because of the Mumbai port. Next is the Vishakhapatnam port in Andhra Pradesh. Now one important point about the Vishakhapatnam port that you must remember that it is a landlocked harbour port. Now you must be wondering if it is landlocked, how it is connected to the sea. It is connected to the sea through a small channel and it caters to the needs of Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. Next is Paradweep in Odisha. Now Paradweep is located in the Mahanadi Delta and it has the deepest harbour specially suited to handle very large vessels. It has been mainly developed to handle large scale exports of iron ore and it caters to the needs of Odisha, Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh. Then there are two ports in West Bengal, one is the Haldia port, the other one is the Kolkata port. Now the Kolkata port is situated on the Hooghly river. And it is 128 kilometers inland from the Bay of Bengal. This is something that you must remember. It is not on the sea coast. And as I just said in the earlier part of the video, it is one of the ports developed by the British. Although now it is not as important in the contemporary times as there are other ports such as the Haldia, Paradweep, Vishakhapatnam, which have taken over uh, the Kolkata port. And there is one more issue with the Kolkata port and that is the deposition of silt in the Hooghly River that causes difficulties for the vessels to reach the port upstream. Now the Haldia port is on the Hooghly River downstream and it was built to reduce the congestion at the Kolkata port. Now this Haldia port handles bulk cargo like iron ore, coal, petroleum, petroleum products and fertilizers etc. Now as you must be knowing that West Bengal is popular for jute products so jute is also one of the export products for Haldia port. Now the last one is the Ennore port. Now one thing that you must remember about Enor port is that it is the only port in India which is not run by a port trust but it is a public listed company. If I remember it correctly around 68% of the shares in this port are with the central government and the remaining are I guess with the Chennai port. Right so these are the major ports of India. So this is it for this video. The PDF notes for this video are available on the Civil Courseify Android app for free. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, download the Civil Courseify Android app and follow us on Facebook and Telegram. Links are available in the description as well as comment section. Till then, thank you and take care.